We are Israel united in Christ. We are here to wake up you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans to your true nationality according to this Bible. Give me Numbers chapter 10. Numbers chapter 10 verse 9. Three. And if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth you, then ye shall blow an alarm with a trumpet, and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. Israel, blow trumpet. <laughs> Hey, excuse me, how you, how you doing today? Brother, come here a second, you got a minute? Yes, what's up? Hey, do you know your nationality? Yeah. What's your nationality, bro? African. African? What part of Africa are you from? Kenya. Kenya? So what's the culture, that, what, what type of things do y'all do in Kenya? What type of things? Yeah, like your tradition? That's my culture, I know, you know what I'm saying, live there. You don't live there? That's where my bloodline comes from. That's where your bloodline comes from, but you don't know like the, the, the way y'all dress? The, the things y'all do, like the yeah, your laws and stuff. Sure, yeah, yeah. Like, what's how do y'all dress in Kenya? Man, they wear pants and you know what I'm saying. The men wear the men dress like men and the women dress like women. Yeah, how, how does the men? Dress? I like that point that you brought up. You said the men dress like men and women dress like women. How do you how do you know like what's a characteristic that a man should have that women don't have? Oh, uh, man wears pants. Give man doesn't a, wear. Give me a little bit. Male, a man you don't wear skirts. You know, a man dresses like a man. You know? Okay, like in Kenya. I'm, no stereotypes here, but like in Kenya, you have wildlife, you have lions, right. lionesses. How do, what's, what's the difference between the lion and the lioness? The lion and lioness? Yeah, the lioness is the female, right. the lion is the male. What? How do you know the difference between them? Well, one, he has a penis. One has a penis, uh, but you have to go underneath to find that, right? Right. Well, so from a distance, so from a distance, can I tell the difference between a male and a female? Does yeah. that actually have to go upon the lion? One is bigger than the other. One's bigger than the other. And another one, the, 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 the mane. Has a mane. I'll praise it. I'm going to read something out of the Bible. Tell me if you can relate to this, all right? Read. Leviticus 21, verse 5. Okay. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Right. Neither shall they shave off the corners of their beard. So according to the Bible, <laughs> it says that a man should not shave off the corners of his head. Shouldn't bald his head. You know what I'm saying? Shouldn't put razor to it, shouldn't clean it off. Nor shall he ball shape. Read that part. Nor neither shall, shall they shave off the corner of their beard. So they shouldn't shave off the corners of their beard. Like you see the men around here, they have beards on their face. You understand? So it says that a man shouldn't do that. So the way you can tell a man different from a woman is by what? His mane. His, he has hair on his head, he has a facial hair. It's a sign of a manly dignity. You okay, understand what I'm saying? How did your people get to Kenya? Do you know that? Actually, I don't. I'm sorry? Actually, I don't. Actually, you don't? I'm gonna bring out something for you real fast. Bring it out. Bring it out. Got a sign here. Sorry. You got a white bro. He doing something. What happened? Well, give me that Luke 21. Book of Luke, chapter 21 and verse 20. So once again, we out here letting you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans know how we got to the west coast of Africa and how we actually got over to this side of the land so that we can know who we are, that we are actually God's people. We are actually the Israelites according to the Bible. Read that. And when ye shall see Jerusalem composed with armies. So it says, when you shall see Jerusalem compassed about with armies, this is talking about the year 70 AD. Okay, read. Then know uh -huh. that the desolation thereof is not. So we're gonna know that the desolation of the destruction of Jerusalem is coming by. Read. Then let them uh -huh. which are in Judea. So them that are in Jerusalem. Flee to the mountains. We're gonna to flee to the mountains. We run into Africa. We were in it. We were in Jerusalem, and then we fled into Africa. Read. And let and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. So those that were in Jerusalem, we need to run because the Romans were coming to sack and destroy Jerusalem. And those that were outside of Jerusalem were not supposed to come back in because that destruction was coming. It's prophesied that that would happen. Read. And let not them that are in the countries uh -huh. enter therein. Right. Keep going. For these be the days of vengeance. So these are the days of judgment upon the Israel because we broke God's law. As a nation of people, we broke God's law. 
we weren't keeping the commandments according to what God gave us. So when the Romans came against us, we fled into the west coast of Africa. Nigeria, Ghana, you know. these places of the west coast of Africa, we weren't African. We we're Israelites. We fled the destruction of our enemy. It's like we're not Americans. Exactly, brother. We're not Americans. We're not African Americans. We're Israelites. You understand? So the Africans didn't sell Africans. If the Israelites, well, since the Israelites fled into Africa and they were sold, who sold who? Africans sold the Israelites into slavery. And that is what the transatlantic slave trade was. We were sent from there over to the Americas and the other parts of the country, the world. Where, where are those, those okay, if, if we are so-called Israelites, uh -huh. and we came from Israelites, and we were pushed out by the Romans, and they were coming to the side, right. and we got to Africa, right. and the Africa sold us to this country. Hey, okay. brother, and sister, come on over. Ain't no so, problem. So, That's so, cool. so those Africans that are there, where are they from? Where are those Africans from? Yeah. Give me that son of a shot, follow the dictionary. Bring it up. We're going to find out who these Africans are, where they came from. You'll follow when you read through this, through the history, you'll find out that Noah had three sons, right? You have Ham, Japheth, and Shem, right? So we're gonna find out who came from where and where they went. Got that? Yes, right. So what we're gonna bring out. Page 213. 213. Page 213. Sorry. Got it? This is the Compact Bible Dictionary. The Zanderbin Compact Bible Dictionary. So we're reading out of a book that the scholars already went through our Bible and they broke down and picked out the pieces that applied to certain people. So we're going to read of the history of who these people that came into Africa are. Okay? Read. Ham, the youngest son of Noah. So Ham, the youngest son of Noah, read. Born probably about 96 years before the flood. Uh -huh. And one of eight persons to live through the flood. So remember how the destruction came upon the earth and the most I saved Noah and his sons and their wives and his wife, right? Right, read. He became the progenitor of the dark races. Do you know what progenitor means? Progenitor means father, okay? Meaning he is the forefather of the dark races. So he says, Ham, the progenitor of the dark races. Let's see if there's any more to that. Read. Not the Negroes. What are we called? What are we called over here? Negro. So we're not Hamites. We're Negroes, according to the definition, which are actually the Israelites. Bro, that's who we are. That's who we be. We are the Israelites of the Bible. That's right. We're the children of the promise. That's right. Read. But the Egyptians. The Egyptians. These are Hamites. Ethiopians. Ethiopians. They're Hamites. Libyans. They are Africans. And Canaanites. Canaanites. These are Africans. But the Negroes, the Israelites, we're not the same people. There's a difference between us. Give me that in uh, Deuteronomy 32. Now we're going to bring something out to you. You may not have known that. We're going to bring this out to you because there's a difference between the Israelites and the Africans. We're not the same people. We may look like we have that dark skin tone, we have similar woolly hair, but we're not the same people. Look. Yeah, they don't have that smooth complexion that you got. We got a, they got, they don't have that same luster that we have in our skin. You, know. you got it? You know what I mean, 32? Eight. Deuteronomy 32, verse eight. Great. When the Most High divided to the nations their sister, inheritance. Sister, brother, when the Most High divided to the nation, when he divided us and was giving us something, listen, read. When he separated. He, what did he do, brother? Separated. Brother, what did the Most High do with the children of Israel? Separated. He separated us, read. The sons of Adam. The Adam, he separated all the sons of Adam, read. He set the board of the bounds of them, uh -huh. the people, according to the number of the children of Israel. Okay, sir. So according to the number of the children of Israel, he divided the land. He gave Ham what is called, what was called the land of Ham, which after it was conquered, the name was changed to Africa. But that's where the Africans were. The Canaanites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Philistines, they, they were in Africa. The Israelites were given a choice land. That choice land was Canaan, which was also later called Israel or Jerusalem. 
You understand? So we're not the same people. Is there more on that? For the Lord's portion is his people. So the Lord's portion, the best of the lands that was created was given to his people. His people are the Israelites, That's according right. to, according to uh, Romans 13, Romans 11. We are his chosen people. We are his people. You understand? You see this on the internet? You know the truth? Yeah. All right, so when these scriptures are coming out, what you should be doing, bro? Supposed to be learning? Hold it. Give that first Corinthians 11. Well, it's amazing how they teach in church right. everything but the truth. Give me one second before you do that one thing. One little quick thing. Help you on your way so you understand what it means to be an Israelite. It's not just good enough to know. Do you understand that you're by the way? Do you understand that you're an Israelite and not necessarily from the place that uh, they sent you from? I'm sorry? I'm processing. You're processing. Okay. Read that real fast. First Corinthians 11, verse 3. Uh huh. But I will have you know uh -huh. that the head of every man is Christ. So do y'all believe in Jesus Christ? I'll praise you. So it says the head of every man is Christ. You understand that? The head of every man is Christ. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. So the head of the man is the woman. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. The head of the woman is the man. Right? Read. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is God. So there's an order to things. The Most High, Jesus the Christ, man, woman, children. All right, read. Every man. Every one of us men. Pray or prophesy. When we're praying or we're reading out this Bible, prophesying, bringing out the scripture. Having his head covered. Having his head covered. Dishonoreth his head. Now do y'all love Jesus? So what should you do when these scriptures are coming out? You're supposed to cover it or uncover it? Okay. Read again. Oh, praise you, brother. That's what it is. Verse 4. Every man pray or prophesy, having his head covered. So if you have your head covered, when the scriptures are coming out, when we're bringing out God's words, dishonor it, his head. And we know that our head is Christ. So we dishonor our head when our head is covered when these scriptures are coming out. You understand that? Okay. You understand that? All praises, that's what repentance is. We need to know what the laws are so we could do what the law tells us to do. We're supposed to honor our head, Christ, by removing our hats. Verse six. Verse six. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. Verse five. Verse five. Verse five. Verse seven, seven. Verse seven. For right, a man bro. indeed. Hey, did you get a flyer? You got a flyer? Get him a flyer. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. For a man indeed, indeed ought not to cover his head. Brother, you understand that? Indeed, when these scriptures are coming out, you're not supposed to have your head covered. You dishonor your head when you do so. Now, I have to bring out another one now that I can see your head. Good. I'm sorry, keep going. There's more on that. Most high name in Hebrew is uh, Shaka. What is your name in English? What is the street name in English? Street name Alabama. Do you know what it is in Hebrew? I got a Hebrew thing on my phone. Do you speak Hebrew? I got Don't language. worry about it, bro. You in the land that speaks English. That's worry right. about English language. That's bro, right. Get that down, Pat, before you go learn another language. All right, let's keep going. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. Uh-huh. For as much as he is the image and glory of God. Right. But the woman is the glory of the man. So the woman is the glory of the man. So she is supposed to respect her, her, her head, her Lord, by covering her head. And the man is supposed to respect his Lord, which is Christ, by uncovering his head That's when these right. scriptures are coming out. You understand that? Okay. Was it more? Okay. Now, give me a, give me a whole Leviticus 20, uh, 21 5. And I'll bring out something that means to us. Now, about us being sold into captivity, we as Israelites broke God's law, statutes, and commandments. And he brought it out in Deuteronomy 28, 68. Now this is the reason, and give me 15. This is the reason why we were sold into slavery, okay? It wasn't just a happenstance that this nation saw another nation and said, hey, let's sell them into slavery. It's because we did something. We went contrary to an ordinance, a law that was given to the Israelites. 
Got that? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Ah. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass. So this is a future prophecy. It shall come to pass. Read. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So the thou there is the Israelites, according to Deuteronomy 1 and 1. This was Moses speaking to all the children of Israel. It shall come to pass that if the Israelites do not keep their law, statutes, and commandments, read. To observe to do all his commandments. So we must do all of them. We must observe to do them. Not just to know what they are, we have to do them. Read. And his statutes, uh -huh. which I command thee this day, Go ahead. that all these curses uh -huh. shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now it didn't say some of these curses. It said all these curses. So from verse 15 to verse 68 are all the curses that fell upon the children of Israel. You black, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, these curses fell upon us Bro. because we broke God's laws. That's right. Read. Curse shall thou be in the city. So it says curse shall we be in the city. When you look around the city, who do you see occupy the lowest parts of the city? Is it a the, the so-called white man that's in the ghettos? Is it a so-called Chinese man in the ghetto? Who's in the ghetto? Who? Israelites are in the ghetto. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, we are the ones filling up the ghettos. We're the ones filling up the prison house, the prison houses. We are the ones at the bottom. Read. And cursed shall thou be in the field. Huh? Cursed shall thou be in the field. So it says, it says cursed shall we be in the field. That's 16 right in the world. Deuteronomy 16 is on, I think. So, when you look on it, brothers and sisters, come close so you can take a look at this. When you, when you look on this, you see that we were in slavery. We were in the fields. We are at the bottom of society because we broke God's law. I'm going to give y'all a few laws to let you know what we did to get to this lowest state. Give me that Leviticus 21. Yep. That above me. Give me that Leviticus 21, verse 5. Yep. Leviticus chapter 21, verse 5. Read. They shall not make baldness upon their head. So, brother, what did that say? Well, he paid attention. He says, what What did he just read? Did you hear it? Yeah, I'm trying to pull up the video. Okay, pay attention. You can pull it up in just a minute. Read. Leviticus 21, verse 5. Leviticus 21, verse 5. Read. They shall not make baldness upon their head. So, the Israelite men, you are not to make baldness upon your head. Came out, bro. It came, hey, it came out, but it didn't come out that clean all around. Mine's coming out. A lot of different brothers' hair is coming out. But we're not supposed to make baldness, meaning put a razor to it. Sister, hold on a minute. Before you leave, I want to give you something. Don't leave yet. Okay. Okay. You got a minute? No, hold up. Hold a second. You go up to that bus? Give just a minute. Give a minute. Read. Neither, sh neither shall they shave off uh -huh. the corner of their beard. So you shouldn't mar or destroy your beard. Let that thing grow. It's a badge of manly dignity. You understand that? Read. Nor make any cuttings in their flesh. So we're not supposed to put tattoos or any types of cuttings in our flesh. Now give me Deuteronomy 22. You got that, brother? Yeah. So let your hair grow. However it grows, let it grow. If you want to trim it, keep it low, keep it low. So however it balls, let it happen. It's a natural, honorable thing. You gonna get me that? Give me Deuteronomy 22 for the sister real fast. And I'm gonna deal with you just a little bit while longer. Deuteronomy 22, verse five. So sister, this is something that has brought us into this lowest state. This is why we're in the land of our captives this day, because we broke God's law. Here's a simple law for you all to start keeping to help bring about the change in our community, to bring about a change for our women and our men. You understand? Read. The woman. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Keep going. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So sister, it says that a woman shall not put on that which pertain to a man, neither shall a man put on that which pertain to a woman. Now sister, what is it that pertains to a woman that if a man wear, you would look upon him strangely? Come a little closer, sister. If a, what is it? What type of clothing? If you saw a man wearing pertains to a woman that makes him look strange, that shows that he's cross-dressed. What is it? What's women clothes? What you have on? That's women clothes. So I'm dressed as a woman. So what's women clothes? Green. Uh, skirt. 
skirt, a dress. So it says if a man puts on the women's clothing, women's underwear, women's skirts, women's dresses, these type of feminine garments, it says it's a what? For all that do so are abominations. So all that cross dress are an abomination. So if I'm wearing women's garment, I am cross dressed, correct? So, let's hear the opposite side. Read the first part again. The woman! Hey sis, yeah. that's your daughter? Yeah, hey daughter, come on over. Don't wonder, wait, stay here, hear the word. The woman! It says the woman, y'all the what? Y'all the women. Is that your son? All right. Yeah. Women, you're a woman now. You're a young woman. Read. The woman uh -huh. shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Now you're not supposed to wear that which pertaineth to a man. Now this your son? Now if you had your son wearing a skirt or a dress, what would he be doing? Now what is it that a man wears that if a woman wears it, she would be cross-dressed? Look at all the men around here. What do we have on? We have on pants. Pants. Pants is a man's garment. It has a manly spirit upon it. Bro, you have a sister, you have a zipper in front of your pants? Sister, you have a zipper in your pants? What is the purpose of that zipper? How does that benefit you? You know. No, you don't know? The zipper, it doesn't. That zipper was made for a man to use it so he can uh, relieve himself and go to the bathroom. You know So it's not made for you. It was made for a man. Those are men's garments. So guess what you're doing, sis? Sis, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're cross-dressing. Yeah, cross-dressing. If a man was doing it, you look on the stage. But you do it in this society willingly. You cross-dress willingly. You understand that? It's an abomination unto the Most High God. See, when a man wants to marry a young lady, he's looking for a woman that he can respect, right? Now, if you're showing off all your business, how can he respect you? How can you bring about a community if you're teaching your daughter, if you taught your daughter to do the same thing you're doing? You taught by example. We can teach by word, but we also teach loudly by our example. Well, we have to be an example to our young Give me that Titus 2. Titus chapter 2 and verse 3. Brother, did you find that so you can read it for yourself? Leviticus 21 5. Did you read it? Yeah. Okay, I'll pray. Keep reading. The aged woman. It's not the aged woman. You're an aged woman. You are. You're an adult woman, you're a mature woman, read. Likewise, uh -huh. that they be in behavior as uh -huh. becoming a holiness. So you must give a holy example. You must teach your daughter holiness. Let's find out what holiness real fast. Give me that in Romans 7. I want you to understand, I don't want you to run past it. I want you to understand what I'm bringing out. So that you can, with a conscious mind, Lord willing, repent and make the right choices. Because this Lord's for us, the so-called Black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You are the Israelites according to the Bible. Read. Romans chapter 7 and verse 12. Verse 12. Read. Wherefore the law uh -huh. is holy. It says the law is holy. So go back to Titus. So it says the woman shall do what? The, the aged woman likewise. Uh -huh. That they be in behavior as becoming holiness. So to be in behavior becoming holiness means you're keeping the law. You must know what the laws are so that you can keep them. So you can teach them to your children. Read. Not false accusers. So as a woman, as a, a, a mature woman, we shouldn't be telling lies. We shouldn't be false accusers. Read. Not giving too much wine. We shouldn't be alcoholics or drunkards. Read. Teachers of good things. We must be teaching our daughters, our sons, good things. The good things are what? Give me what's good. Rome, Romans chapter 7 and verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. Actually, it's 12. Verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy, uh -huh. and the commandment holy, uh -huh. and just, and good. So the commandments are good. That's what we must be teaching our children. And where are you going to find those commandments, sister? Where can we find the commandments? In the Bible. You must be studying this Bible to know to teach your children righteousness, goodness, the law, so that they can repent and be saved on that day of judgment. But judgment is coming. Well, God is going to judge us for the things that we do and the things we don't do. But we have to know them. Do our best to know them so we can teach our children. We'll give you one more. Um, give me that number for both of them. Is there more on there? Finish it. That they may teach the young women uh -huh. to be sober. Right, sober. To love their husband. So you have to teach your children how to love your husband. I don't want to get into your business, but sis, do you have a husband? Why not? What happened? You mean, you want to go into it? 
You want to go into it a little bit? No? Okay, I'll break. I'm going to give you something. Here's, here's what breaks down that structure. Give me that uh, Deuteronomy 22, what is it? 27. Uh, no, actually, give me Hebrews 13. Give me Hebrews 13. Go! I'm going to give you something that will help us understand the situation that we're in. This is what the Most High instructed us to do. All right? Hebrews 13 verse 4. That's great. Marriage is honorable. It says marriage is honorable. So we men out here, we're trying to raise up a nation. We're trying to teach us God's law so that we can be a household again. We have broken families so men can be men, women can be women, so we can have a good structure because that's what God gave us. Read. And all in the bad undefiled. So it says marriage is honorable. We need to be teaching marriage in our community, not single household. What? Read. But whoremongers. That's whoremongers. Men that don't love their women and don't want to marry them, those are whoremongers. Those that like to sleep around, those are whoremongers. Read. And adulterers. It says adulterers. Those that are in a marriage and want to step out on their wives or step out on their husbands, those are adulterers. Read. God will judge. It says God will judge us. God will judge us Israelites for stepping out in our relationship, for not honoring marriage. You understand? So, do you have a boyfriend, Seth? Do, do, do you believe in having a boyfriend? No. Do you, so you believe in marriage? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I, I still can't hear you, Seth. You don't believe in marriage either? But what did we just read here in the Bible? It says marriage is honorable. It doesn't mean to have a boyfriend. It doesn't mean to have a side piece. It's a, what we need to understand is, sis, if you're not in a marriage, in a, in a, in a wife position, you are not honored. You are a side piece. They could do what they want. They could leave. They could give you a child and run away. That bring, does that bring about a strong community? No, it breaks down a community. Why don't you believe in marriage? Why don't you believe in that? Is it? I don't. I don't. Forgive me. Is it because of, you saw something with your mother? And the, your parents, is that type of thing? Do you know, I'm sorry, do you know your father? Do you have a good relationship with him? Now, is there, I'm, I'm, I don't really pride too much, but I'm just, I just want to bring about the fact that with that dual household, you're able to teach your children. You're able, the men, you, a woman can't teach a man to be a man. Right. You understand that? You need a man to teach a man to be a man. My wife cannot teach my sons how to carry themselves as a man. That's right. The responsibilities of a man. Right. They can educate them in uh, knowledge as far as education and how to uh, groom themselves, but as far as the role of a man, a woman can't teach it. You understand that? So it's important to have a man in your relationship. Not just a, a boyfriend, but a husband. But I hope y'all get that. I hope you go into the scriptures and understand that this is for you. This is about building back our nation. Because we are the Israelites according to the Bible. Right. And we were brought to this low estate because we stepped away from that. All right, I don't want y'all to miss your bus, but did y'all get a flyer? Yeah, I got one. Okay, I'll pray. Shalom, this is, I'm Elder Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, Please make sure you subscribe to this join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels.